Hey, what's up? We're back with another movie breakdown. I have to tell you something very interesting. In finding this scene, I probably watched scenes from about 20 or 30 different movies. And it's really interesting the way that Hollywood treats pickup scenes in movies. A lot of times, there's just a little spark or the introduction or the hello, and then they kind of cut through the main bulk of it, the main educational part or the main part where they'd actually have to write a pickup scene, and they just cut to the end. Um, so it actually is hard to find real true pickup scenes that go from beginning to end um, in Hollywood movies. However, um, this scene from Vanilla Sky, or this collection of scenes from Vanilla Sky, is actually really good in that regard. It is a full pickup from the meet all the way to taking the girl home. Um, and I also found it to be a very, very interesting one that I think you're going to learn a lot from in terms of um, the, the lessons contained within it. Uh, I don't want to do too much further ado, so we're going to crack into the scene. But to give you a little bit of context, um, Tom Cruise's character, basically when we cut in, is throwing a party, um, and he's a kind of a rich, successful guy. Um, and then Jason Lee's character is a, a friend of Tom Cruise's who just met this girl at the library, so basically on a cold approach or something like that himself, brought her to Tom Cruise's party, um, so onto Tom Cruise's kind of home turf, um, and then from there we pick it up. So without too much further ado, let's look at the scene. Well, literary god, Brian Shelby. Happy birthday! <laughs> and all the usual shit people say to each other, how you doing? Living the dream, baby, living the dream. David Ames. And what do I with this pleasure? The pleasure of Sofia Serrano. We met today at the library, if you can believe that. I'm sorry about my coat. It's too big for your closet. We were both pretending to be intellectuals. It's uh, amazing. I love your coat. No, I, I overdressed. I mean, I underdressed. I'll just continue like you're both actually listening to me. Do you have another room to put it in? Danielle? I have ceased to exist. Madison Square Garden is nearby. I think it might fit there. Yes, David. Happy birthday. We picked it out together. Thank you. We picked it out together. We. What? Stop flirting and open it. Let's okay. get a drink. Uh, yes. Mm. I'll leave this upstairs. Okay, so there is a lot going on here, right? Um, why was it so easy for the Tom Cruise character to gain value? Well, the fact of the matter is he already had value before he even got there, right? In all likelihood, the, the way it appears, if you were to give it some context, it appears that Jason Lee invited the Penelope Cruz character to, um, to this party uh, and probably talked it up. Said, oh, it's this amazing event. Oh, this guy's like crazy rich all these kind of things. So Tom Cruise's reputation preceded himself. Even he walks in, he's like, welcome to Graceland, right? So um, he's already put Tom Cruise on a pedestal. And so what happens as soon as the Penelope Cruz character meets the Tom Cruise character, right, is that she's already qualifying herself. She's already apologizing for things, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. He's already been made the most important person. That said, Jason Lee, if he were to just sit there and like be normal and not make a big deal about the fact that he's being ignored and not call it out, it wouldn't even be that weird because, yes, maybe the Penelope Cruz character would be attracted to the Tom Cruise character. Yeah, sure, it makes sense. There's value there. But socially, she's not going to do anything about it. And socially, Jason Lee's character did just pick her up at a library and did just pull her to this party and does have a ton of value. Uh, and so he'd still be in a totally good spot. But as soon as he starts being reactive, as soon as he starts being tryhard, as soon as he starts super acknowledging what's going on, um, he's just lowering and lowering and lowering his own relative value. So this is an interesting thing that happens in an AMOG situation. AMOG, by the way, is a pickup term, means alpha male, other guy. It's basically when two guys are competing for a girl. Um, but what happens is the person who is reacting more to the other guy is going to have lower social value. So Jason Lee, the way his character is reacting in this case, is actually lowering his social value by the second. Right? One thing he does do well, though, is um, he gets out of this situation. He ends this situation and is able to then get in a one-on-one -on -one situation and get Tom Cruise's character to go continue off with the party, which is what you should do in this kind of situation. When you're losing in an AMOG situation, you should leave it, like take the girl out and away from that situation. So he does do that well in this particular case. Danny Brams and that pretty last So this is what's become of rock and roll. A smashed guitar behind a glass case displayed on some rich guy's wall. It was a gift, actually. I like it. Okay, so this is very interesting. And so up to now, there was a spark of attraction between the two characters. It existed, right? But that doesn't necessarily mean much without it being followed up on, without something more materializing out of it. 
Um, and actually, a lot of times, guys I see go out and do a game will end up with a good spark with a girl, and then the girl gets pulled away by circumstance, and they make the fundamental mistake of not reapproaching, not continuing it, either assuming, oh, if she liked me, she'll find me again, or, oh, if she left, she must not have liked me that much. All right? Understand that um, game occurs when you are in the girl's presence. Game occurs between two people, and so the fundamental first thing you must do to be gaming is to have the girl's attention, right? And what that means is if she does get pulled away by her friends, or a fight breaks out near you and she gets distracted, or the DJ comes on and everything changes, you're going to have to re-engage again. The way he did it here is very good. It was very situational, very like not a big deal, and um, kind of it, it put her in an awkward spot in a kind of fun, funny way, right? Um, so he re-engaged, and then she's, she's playing along, she's being playful, kind of flirtatious, um, et cetera. So anyway, in any case, though, he reopened, and this is a big thing most guys don't do. All right? So please, 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 if you have a good interaction with a girl at a party, or a good interaction with a girl at a bar, and then circumstance doesn't favor you, it does not mean it's over. Please, please, please go try again. Please go restart that conversation. Whoa, 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 whoa. So how did you get all this stuff, this apartment, this life? And that's great. That is an excellent shit test, right? Um, and again, it would be another opportunity for him to give up, him to be like, oh shit, never mind. She left once, now she's leaving again. She's blowing him off. But again, um, one, persistence can be needy or it can be entitled, right? So if you're persistent and, and you know, she's rejecting you, you're like, no, please, please have me, please have me, that's needy. But if you're persistent in the way of like, no, 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 you don't understand, I guess you haven't met me, et cetera, you can be persistent in a confident way. You can be persistent in a way that says, um, no, you just may not have recognized my value, value, let, value yet. Let me show you who I really am. And that's kind of what he's doing here. Um, also, what he's going to do following on from this is going to be very interesting, very, very good, and um, very engaging, which is important. It's important that what you do early on in an interaction is engaging. Um, so one, He's being persistent, but in a non-needy way. And then two, what he does next is very engaging. And actually what he does next is literally a, um, a you could call it a gimmick or a trick or a, a line or whatever, something that I've actually used in one form or another myself and does actually work very well in the real world. How about if you help me? <laughs> Unless I'm pointing in here. You are, but the food's good. See, I've got this little problem. I've got a stock. It doesn't sound life to me. But I need a cover. I need for you to pretend we're having a simulating conversation and you are wildly entertained. <laughs> I know it's tough. I'll improvise. She's uh, right across the room and she's burning a hole in my back right now, isn't she? Red dress, trappy shoes? Yes. Wow. She's really staring at you. Okay, so this is absolutely great on so many levels, right? One, social proof. He has a very hot girl who is clearly into him. He's clearly actually trying to avoid the hot girl, which is not a situation most guys are in, right? Um, the very fact they're in that position shows a ton of social value, right? Girls respond to girls that have been, uh, guys that have been pre-approved by other girls. Um, so you can do this, by the way, you can do this exact same line in a bar without having the girl even be into you. You can just point out some girl and just say she's been following you or something like that, and I've done that, and it actually does work because it's a fun, interesting way to, to start the conversation. The girl doesn't necessarily think you're being like, that it's actually happening, but it's fun, it's playful, it's a role play. It, it creates this little conspiracy frame of you and the girl together, and it's way more interesting than where you're from, what do you do, how old are you, that kind of stuff. It's even better if there is another girl who is looking at you for whatever reason, right? Maybe it's a friend who is looking over or a girl who you were talking to that, that is thinking a certain thing, whatever. If you have that available, by all means, this kind of scenario is actually ideal. Um, but again, this is just how much more fun is this? The whole, oh, there's a stalker, you have to protect me, than, hey, I'm a doctor, what do you do? You're a lawyer, what do you, you know? It's just, you want to avoid these boring things. So this is great. Um, and it's also the role she's going to play of pretending to be into you pretending to be uh, the, a romantic interest, it's already putting the right frame around things as well. It's putting the frame that it's a man to woman conversation between you and her. So there's so many good things about this. Again, I've used it myself. It's very, very good. Don't use it like every single girl you talk to for the rest of your life, but it's a fun little, um, fun little gambit, you'd call it, a fun little gimmick to do. Um, it can work really, really well. And she seems to be crying less happy. I think she's the saddest girl to ever hold a martini. Don't 
Hi, Jennifer. You have another apartment? Sort of a day office. Okay, so now here, I told you a lot of times Hollywood scenes, they cut from one thing to the next. It would really be nice to know what comes next here, and a, a decent amount of the pickup, you know, would occur here. However, because his frame is so good, because the frame that you have to protect me from the stalker is very, very good, um, it would make it a lot easier to move her around than it might be in other cases. So there might have to be a lot less game um, to be moving around. Also, he's in his home turf. He's, she's already technically in his house in a way. So moving around to a place that is his room or, or his apartment or whatever would be easier in this context than it might otherwise be. So it's still it's plausible that on very little more game she could be going with him. But you know, I'd like to see that game a little bit. This is kind of a you know skipped over some some of the the meaty parts of the pickup that I really would like to see here. But it's not implausible it could go well because there was initial spark. The frame set is pretty good. So it wouldn't take too 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 much longer after a few more minutes of dialogue or something like that. This is not implausible. I am not going in there. Good night. Okay, now that is really interesting. That is what you call high risk, high reward, right? Slam the door, okay, fine. If you're not coming in, don't come in. Um, I've not done this move quite that risky before. Um, I do do something similar though, which is if I'm walking a girl back to my place, um, what I will do at the door a lot of times is I will just literally walk in and I won't, I'll just walk in, like I'll fling the door open so it like, you know, like goes open and they have ample time to walk through it. Um, but I don't sit there and explicitly explain to them they're coming in. I don't explicitly like, you know, have that discussion about whether, whether they're coming in or not. I just kind of assume they are. And it, it is a good move in a way because um, a lot of times the girl does you know, want to go with you, does want to go home with you. But if she starts thinking a little bit about it, she's like, oh, how's, she, how's he gonna judge me? What's he gonna think, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and so, you know, just that, that move can work. And occasionally it will happen that the girl, that the door actually does close in between us. It's very rare. I would say like 95% of the time, the girl just walks in with me. Um, like maybe two and a half percent of the time, the girl gives some kind of resistance as we're walking up and then we actually do have a conversation outside and, and maybe I end up taking her to somewhere else before coming to my place or we talk a little bit and she eventually comes in. And then like, again, like 2% of the time the door actually closes. And of those times, um, I don't do what he did, which is just stay behind the door. What I do is I wait for a second, let it be a, a kind of awkward for her and then I'll like open the door and be like, what are you doing, silly? Come on in, right? Um, but this idea that he was willing to keep walking, this idea that he was willing to let the door close, that he wasn't so needy and insecure that she might not be following is very, very powerful. Um, and in this case, um, she did already come with him knowing that it was his place she was going to. So it actually is a little weird for her to stop at the door knowing that, right? Um, knowing that, that you know, she was already had that plan and she stopped it on the doorway. So in a sense, he's kind of calling her bluff. Now that said, um, it would be a lot better if he had just been a little more patient, right? So when taking a girl home, rather than having to do like some kind of crazy power move of shut the door and hope she like you call her bluff or something like that, it's way better to be patient up front. It's way better to have a little more comfort built, a little more buy-in, spend a little more time, even like, I mean, obviously if the premise is she, he's leaving the party to get away from the stalker girl, whatever, but spend a little more time once they've left the party to make it a little more comfortable, get the girl more bought in so you don't have to resort to these moves. Generally, game that has fewer moves in it and fewer like big, like big events in it is better game, right? So while this move, when it works, is really, really good and definitely plausibly can work, um, the fa doing, having to do this move because you got that resistance on the doorway is a sign of some bad game somewhere else, right? It's a sign that maybe you could have been more patient and avoided this in the first place. So while I don't hate the move, um, I, I would like to think that in good game, a move like this should very, very, very rarely be necessary. Quick comment on that. The looking through the, the people thing is actually right, really kind of good because it allows him to actually call the bluff without actually putting as much on the line, right? So to, for her, it appears like he totally has just like, fine, if you wanna leave, you can leave. For him, him looking through the people, if she actually were to walk off, 
he has another crack at it, right? So he has an insurance policy, right? So he's not playing like putting all his eggs in one basket. He's playing the power move of, oh, she can come in. But if she actually did walk off, you would assume and hope he would then open the door and like go and be like, oh my God, you're so silly. Come back here, that kind of thing. Or, or wow, you would bloody leave. I knew you were in trouble. Something like that. So it's nice to have an insurance policy. It's, it's not a good idea usually to, to do a bluff that if called is completely done. Right? And so that's a reason why like in a club, like fully like leaving the club and leaving the girl where you can't find her again is a bad move. In this case, he's left her in the hall, he's left her to make a decision, but if she, she made the wrong decision, he does have a backup plan, he has a way out. So it's a, a minor detail, but that, that people thing is actually very important. I hear her coming. Really? No. Now, as of that moment, she's yours. As of that moment, you've got her. Why? Um, well, one, she bluffed, you called her bluff, and she came back. She basically admitted she's unwilling to walk away. That's absolutely huge. Also, she's completely playing into your frame. She knows Stalker's not coming. She knows you know she's not coming. And she's just looking for some kind of an excuse to save face. But she's basically saying, I wanted to come with you the whole time. I'm just looking for a way to do it that's not slutty, that's not like, you know, too try hard, whatever. Um, but she's, she's fully bonded this time. So at this moment, as of that moment, like she's yours. All you need to do from here as a man is just sit back, bide your time, value is established. Maybe she needs you to take some time, be patient, build some comfort, that kind of stuff. But she is bought in from that moment. So a little bit of context. Um, he showed her around his place. They got to know each other just a little bit, built some comfort, that sort of thing. One thing that was really good in the scene that, that you know, you could watch if you wanted to go watch the full scene in the movie. He does a very good job of getting to know the girl, showing his life, but at the same time having interesting answers, not giving boring answers. He also does an interesting thing where he's self-deprecating in ways that don't hurt him, right? Um, so he'll self-deprecate about the fact that like um, he had this like privileged rich kid lifestyle, um, but he's still showing a lot of really positive traits, a lot of really attractive traits um, that go along with it. So it's a lot of, I call it the humble brag. Um, so there's a lot of good elements there, um, but it's just kind of a, a long-ish scene to go through and it would make this video incredibly long if I went through it. But I do recommend check out the full scene from Vanilla Sky, it is really, really good. Um, but where we're gonna pick it up um, is they were in isolation, he and the girl, and then his friends somehow, do we, don't, we don't see in the movie, but somehow came over and met them. So now the, the friend who originally had picked her up at the library is now back here. Um, but he's kind of given up, right? So, and, and this happens a lot when you have this situation of guys competing, is that at a certain point, one guy just assumes the other guy's better or one guy just doesn't want to compete because it's a lot easier to say, oh, I gave up than, oh, I lost because I was not the better man. Um, and so you'll see this a lot. So what, what his friend did is actually got drunk, um, gave up and is, is about to go home. Um, and I will point out that on, Tom, on the part of Tom Cruise's character in this, it's a very, very dick move to steal a girl from your friend. This is not a classy thing to do, not something you should be doing to your friends, and hopefully something that your friends don't do to you either. But um, from a, a value and game perspective, this is you know, accurate as to how something like this could go down for sure. We are bros. I feel the same way. Sure you do. Hi. Hey. Hi. How you doing? Ooh, gracias. De nada. Thank you. Yeah, I work. Where are you going? I am Frank. And Frank must go. What? I good you bid evening. Wait, I'll go with you. So right there, right, as much as he's already lost the, the battle between him and Tom Cruise, at that moment he could have salvaged it. Because if she did go home with him out of like politeness or the fact she came with him or whatever, and they go home together, they're one-on-one, -on -one. he's not in direct competition, they are two people that like each other, it actually could have gone really, really well for him. But he had already given up. He had already emotionally decided he cared more about saving face and saving his ego than he did about winning the situation. Or he had decided he didn't want to compete with his friend or whatever. But anyway, he had already kind of mentally lost this situation. But just so you know, as of this moment, it was still actually salvageable to him. But as of the following moment, it no longer really is. Stay here, baby. I'll give you a ride home later. No, I have to work tomorrow. You, you are in great hands. I'm just humoring myself that my opinion matters. So as we cut forward to the next scene, it is kind of interesting because it's kind of a silly move to make. 
Um, so he already has Tom Cruise's character, already has Penelope Cruz's character. Interesting Cruise and Cruise, I just thought of that. Anyway, they, they're, they're back at his place. It already could go really, really well. They don't necessarily need to go anywhere else, but he does take her home. Um, presumably the reason is that he offered her a ride home and he's playing out that sort of script, which is totally fine. Um, in the case where, um, you know, if she doesn't have roommates, logistics are good, those kind of things. Um, and if he's very confident of being let in the door at her place. So if all that's in place, there's nothing really wrong with it. And actually, some girls will be more comfortable um, having sex at their place than at yours. Especially in the case that she said, which is she has to get up early in the morning. This is actually a valid thing. So think about it this way. If the girl does have work early in the morning, if she stays over at your place as a guy, she has to worry about... Well, I have to wake up, shower, go change clothes into my work clothes, not be wearing the same stuff. It's just this hassle of she really might be late for work. It really might be a huge, serious imposition in her life. Whereas if you went and stayed over at her place, well, she has all her stuff there. She can get ready for work. She won't be late. It's actually much more convenient for her. So in the case where a girl does have to get up early, that is one of the few cases where it actually does make sense to maybe go to her place instead of going to yours. Again, I said maybe 99% of the time, at least 95% of the time, the vast majority, it is way better to go to your place because you just have so much more control of the different variables. Um, so in general, take the girl to your place instead of hers, it's way, way, way better. But in the particular case where it either follows a story that was established as part of the reason you took her home or she has to get up early, those are valid reasons why going to her place might make sense. And that does exist in this case um, if you're you know, giving the, the writer the benefit of the doubt on that. Um, another thing that I love here that you're gonna hear is as he's going into her place, he probably has full permission and they've already been talking for a long time. She was already back at his place, et cetera. He probably already has full permission to enter, but he still does what we call the false time constraint when he walks in, which he says, I can't stay for very long. That's a very, very good move. It should almost be a habit for you um, when walking into a girl's place or um, when, when escalating in a way that might result in a rejection. So listen for that as they walk in. Hi. A lot of people are scared of heights. It's not the heights that bother me. Let's stay long. Hey, Paolo! <coughs> Hello. I have to take you for a walk. I'm glad he protects you. This is uh, it's a lethal canine. I love living here. There's actually another thing, another factor with going to a girl's place. Actually, if the girl has a dog, that's actually another reason why going to her place because girls who are dog owners, oftentimes their dog has been cooped up inside all day. Their dog has to go for a walk because it has to go pee and poop. Otherwise, it'll like, it will do its business inside the apartment or it will be massively, massively uncomfortable. So well, actually, a lot of dog owners, um, in a way, it's hard to pull them to your place because they feel responsible for their dog. So that's actually a third reason um, why you may um, sometimes have to pull to a girl's place. So that's another valid consideration in this case. So again, we've cut ahead here. Uh, there was some very good like get to know you scenes. And when I talk about uh, my model for, for game, there's a piece in there called narrative, which is what is the story of you and the girl together? Um, you know, what makes you and them special? How do you relate in a, in a different kind of a way? Um, if she was gonna tell her friends about meeting you, what like high moments would she, would she talk about? There's a lot of good moments like that um, in this next little bit. Um, again, go watch the movie. Um, it's a great example of that kind of stuff. Um, there's not a whole lot to break down in it. It's just pretty self-explanatory, but it is a really, really good example. Um, it's just kind of long for this breakdown. Um, so we're gonna cut ahead to a moment. They're now on the couch. They're now being a little bit intimate and we're gonna see um, the moments surrounding their first kiss. So let's check that out. That's comforting. It's safe for Benny. I'm in. You'll learn more about human relationships. Boy will still meet girl, they will still fall in love, families will flourish, but man will meet his mind. This is how I prefer to spend my retirement. We better watch out. Life extension. Raymond Tool. Um, so that is actually one of my absolute favorite moves is to actually go really close to kissing and not kiss. Um, although there is a better version of it, in my opinion, which is this, which is kiss a little bit and then pull away first. Um, and so either way, what you're doing though, is you're kissing in a way that maintains or increases the sexual tension rather than reducing it. Whereas a lot of times there's a lot of tension before you kiss. If you kiss, now you've become a little obvious. Um, you've kind of crossed that threshold. 
Um, and so, especially if you kiss and then are pushing and pushing and she pulls away from the kiss first, you actually can lose a lot of the sexual tension you had before. So either going close to kissing and pulling away is good, or actually kissing a little bit and then pulling away first is a really good move. Um, in this case, um, actually interestingly enough, she pulled away first, um, but it was still a case where it was clear he could have kissed her and didn't, so he still did maintain a lot of sexual tension, and she's still like very into it and very aroused by the whole thing. Um, so overall, a um, move that I definitely think um, is, is good in a lot of contexts. Where are you going? I left my number on your fridge. I'm here. I want to tell you a secret. I meant that to be your forehead. Thank you for the inspiration. Okay, so that's kind of the ideal scenario of how you'd like a kiss to go down is that you built so much tension around the kiss that she just decides to kiss you. And in that case, that's an extreme move where she calls you over to kiss you. That, that usually won't happen in real life. But what may happen is that you've gotten so close a bunch of times that eventually she just can't stand the tension anymore. She just decides to just lean over and kiss you first. Um, and that's ideal because in escalating physically, it matters less how far you get physically then it matters who's the one initiating it and who's the one more attached to it. So getting the girl to chase you with your physical escalation is very, very powerful. Um, now, in this case, he leaves his number on the fridge and goes home. Um, and having a situation like this where you did have an amazing night together, she kissed you instead of you kissing her, and you're the one leaving, it is very likely that you are going to see her again. It's very likely she's going to have positive reflections on that, and it could go very, very well. However, the higher percentage thing generally when it's going this well, if you want to see the girl again, is to actually have sex with her. Because um, for girls, um, when, when they have sex, there are a lot of different chemicals released that make them get more attached to a guy. Also, for girls, um, once they have had sex with a girl, there's a, a psychological principle called commitment and consistency, where they start justifying all the reasons why they did have sex with you, whereas beforehand they maybe were justifying reasons why they didn't, or, or other things like that. Um, and so, um, as much as this is probably very solid, um, the most solid thing you can do on a pole is sleep with a girl. Now, ironically, the least solid thing you can do on a pole is get really close to sleeping with her, be pushy, and not get there. So what you want to do when you get back to a girl's place is actually be very patient, have her ideally escalating on you, chasing you as much or more than you're chasing her. But then if a clear opportunity exists, if it's clearly on and clearly can go to sex, the best thing you can do for the relationship most of the time is to actually have sex rather than leave it hanging and walk away. Um, so um, from a pure game perspective, the walking away here isn't um, necessarily the best move. Now, in the movie, there are reasons for it, both in terms of plot and also in terms of character philosophy. So um, I'm not saying that like the writer didn't know this or di didn't think that way or whatever, um, but um, I'm just telling you from a game perspective um, the right thing to do um, for seeing the girl again, building a relationship, would be, this is actually good, but actually having sex would be better. The worst, though, would be pushing and trying to have sex and not achieving it. Um, it's what I call the point of no return, and you don't want to be at the point of no return. So anyway, um, of the scenes I've seen in movies, this one is very, very realistic in terms of how a pole can look, how a pole can go down, a lot of things about value and how it's established in a man, -to -man versus man context. Right? Um, there's this thing I call like stealing buying temperature, where if a girl's attracted to one guy and kind of has made a decision that she likes a guy, um, maybe will go home with someone tonight, um, is, is thinking along those lines, then she's presented with a guy who by comparison looks better, all the emotions she had for that initial guy can get very quickly transferred onto that second guy. Um, it's, it's an unusual phenomenon, but it, it definitely happens. Right? Um, so it's, it's a very interesting kind of a thing to see. Um, also, the, the things that the Tom Cruise character does in this, this movie, he's clearly being written as a character who has had success with girls and is very good with girls in the past, and it comes through in the way that it's written. I think it's very, very accurate. So um, yeah, there's some things game-wise that I, I would have done differently if I were in his shoes, but overall I would say the writers um, definitely had a good grasp of male-female dynamics, had a good grasp of game, and wrote a pretty damn accurate 
uh, pickup scene overall. So I hope you enjoyed the scene. I hope you enjoyed the breakdown. And actually, like I said, this scene is longer than what I've shown. So if you ever want to go check out the movie Vanilla Sky, it's probably about 15 straight minutes of just this scene and, and, so, and scenes around it. So um, really, really good movie. Um, really, really good scene. Check it out. And hopefully you'll check me out on the next video as well.